Thanks very much, and thanks very much for the opportunity to, to, to be here. And always good to see organising uh, bodies live by their values, in a way. The hospitality last night was fantastic and, 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 and much appreciated. Uh, sadly, this morning we're into reciprocity, uh, and <coughs> the, the, there's no such thing as a free meal, apparently. Uh, <coughs> and then, thankfully, I have been allowed quite significant autonomy in, in, in deciding on what, what to say, which possibly is, is where values go too far. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, <coughs> hospitality, reciprocity, and, and uh, autonomy are really worthy goals, worthy goals for the community we want, for the environment with, within which we might seek to locate com communities. They're important ideals, ideals that we care about, ideals that we espouse or we wouldn't be here. I think most powerfully though, <coughs> they're, they're important values. They're important values that could and should be motivating uh, change in the world that, that, that we live in. And values are central to change and values are central to, to realising change and when it comes to uh, ageing and older people we, we do need uh, si significant change. However, we do have to get behind the labels <coughs> and see well, what do we mean and do we have a shared meaning of, 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 of these values and we do have to trace out the implications of, 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 of these values. So when I look at hospitality, I look for <coughs> and think about welcome I think about inclusion and inclusion of, 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 of diversity. Other people might have other meanings. But when I think about welcome and inclusion, <coughs> then I seek communities uh, that are a place for all ages. Communities where, where the various and differing needs of different ages are taken into account. The different experience, the different uh, situation, the different life stage of, of different peoples within the community are all accommodated and, and adjusted for. And communities are a space of belonging for, for all ages. When I see reciprocity, I think about exchange and the distribution of resources and the distribution of privilege. I think of mutuality and inter interdependence and the respect and dignity that interdependence has to rely on. So I see community as a place for dignity, for human worth to be celebrated, for justice and for a sharing of resources across all, 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 all ages. And when I think of autonomy, I think of choice and options, but also the freedom to make choices and the capacity to make choices between real options. And community becomes a place where all ages have a say, where all ages can influence and shape decisions that, that impact on them, where we get to live lives that each of us have reason to value, a space that is democratic. And when we seek communities that are inclusive of diversity, where dignity and justice are at play, and when, where democracy uh, and participation in decision making is, is, is present, uh, we are talking about equality. So just as well I'm here. Um, <coughs> when we talk about equality, we, we've got to answer the question, well, how far do we want to go? And the reality is we've not been willing to go terribly far to, to date that the model that dominates is a model of fairness and tolerance. They're really important values in, in an Irish context. They're good values, but they're very limited. We can be fair in terms of making sure everybody has a minimum entitlement and that the competition for advantage after that is fair and without discrimination. But we can have that fairness sitting comfortably alongside inequality. And if people don't succeed, it now becomes their fault. Uh, tolerance as well is, is very powerful when it comes to diversity. It captures, I think, our discomfort with diversity because we tolerate things, it's about putting up with things. There's something wrong with things that we have to tolerate. So where we tolerate diversity or different ages, there's something wrong with, with ageing and, and different ages. Tolerance, sadly, can coexist with contempt. Values of reciprocity, values of hospitality, values of autonomy demand more and a greater ambition. They demand an equality that's about outcomes uh, for, 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 for different groups in, in society. Outcomes in terms of how we distribute resources, how we distribute power, and most importantly, how we distribute status and standing in, in, in our society. It demands more than tolerating difference. We need to celebrate difference. We need to see that difference is something actually we need as a society. Difference is of value to, to, to society. Uh, and difference is normal. Um, and then <coughs> we, we need to think about um, outcomes in terms of not everybody being the same, but everybody getting a real opportunity to live the life that they have reason to, 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 to value. 
We can look <coughs> at different types of motivations uh, to underpin those, those ambitions. We can reach back to culture and, and tradition, seek a place where we didn't fear young people, where we didn't fear aging, where we didn't seek to hide away older people from the mainstream of, of, of society. But in reaching back, I think, all we find still is a common sense marred in stereotypes, stereotypes of, of, of different age groups, stereotypes that generalize and diminish, stereotypes that limit people's choices and limit our expectations of, of, of people. We can look at rules and regulations. We can set a standard, and setting standard is important. When we set a standard for equality, uh, we are sending out, I think, an important message that equality and equality for all is, 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 is important. But it's still a control function in many ways. We seek to control be behavior to try and get more positive outcomes. And there's a real challenge, I think, in terms of looking at motivations to think about inspiration and to look to, to values. Uh, and an inspiration that isn't about looking at older people and saying, aren't they great? But it's about looking at all of us <coughs> and saying, look at what we are, look at what we believe, and look at how we can achieve change to, to inspire, in, 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 other, in other words. The situation, to my mind, is, is, is not great when it comes to hospitality, autonomy, and reciprocity. Uh, we do see significant inequalities experienced by, by older people. Hospitality is undermined by, in particular, diminished status and standing and the stereotypes that abound of, of, of older people. Stereotypes that do lead to discrimination, where autonomy and choice is undermined by exclusion and segregation. Uh, <coughs> and harassment where and abuse, where reciprocity is essentially undermined by abuse being patronized and, and an absence of, of, of human worth and human, human dignity being, being recognized. And that's despite the fact that we do have standards in place. We do have an Employment Equality Act. We do have an Equal Status Act that prohibit discrimination on an age ground. We were early movers in Europe on, on, on in that way. And older people have championed uh, the use of that legislation. They have pursued cases in employment that have challenged retirement ages and age limits in, 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 in the workplace. They've pursued cases, very important cases, in relation to insurance and access to insurance uh, beyond cer 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 certain, certain age limits. But we have problems with our standards. There is uh, significant under-reporting. Uh, people don't report, not because they don't know how to report, <laughs> but they've come to accept that discrimination is the norm. They've come to accept that change is not possible and sometimes are just afraid of the consequences of pos posing a challenge. Likewise, at the moment, th there is a lack of enforcement. We don't hear about cases being taken by older people at, at the moment. We're not using the standard to assert rights and, and to make sure change is driven by the standard that, 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 that we've set. The systems we've put in place are, at the moment, not delivering outcomes in, in relation to the standard set. And then there is the problem, the standard set is at a minimal level. It is about ensuring equal treatment, that less favourable treatment doesn't happen. It's about fairness and, and we need a greater standard. The legislation does allow action to achieve full equality in practice and I think most recently has introduced a new element, what's called the public sector duty, where public bodies are required to promote equality, eliminate discrimination and protect human rights in carrying out all, 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 all their functions. That could be a game changer and yet so few people seem to, to, to know about that re re recent uh, development. We have also, I think, <coughs> th used the standard to try and lever change that goes beyond fairness and that does seek equality. We've tried to use the standard to, to secure in institutional change of greater ambition where diversity does get accommodated and, in, and included, where equality does get pursued and, 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 and achieved. And we've looked to uh, using the legislation as a lever to encourage organisations to put in place policies and procedures, to have standards for equality and diversity in, in, in the workplace and in the services that, 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 that they provide. And that is really important. But again, within organisations, policy and procedure have to battle it out with custom and tradition. And that, that is a significant battle in terms of organisational cultures and where hospitality, reciprocity and autonomy sit within organisational cultures. But I think there's something missing and we do need to move beyond <coughs> um, <coughs> levers and regulations and control functions to look at processes that might inspire change, processes that might inspire <coughs> um, a focus on hospitality, reciprocity uh, uh, and, and autonomy. 
And that is about values and about values-led approaches to social change and values-led approaches to, to community building. And we need to remember, well, what are values? Values are those ideals that are important to us. Values are powerful because they motivate us. They inform the choices we as individuals make. They inform the, our behaviours. They inform and shape our attitudes and our responses to different, different stimulus. And likewise, within organisations, and this is where it becomes really important, values, dominant values within any organisation will be seen to shape <coughs> the outcomes and outputs of that organisation, the priorities of that organisation, the way that organisation go goes about its, its, its business. And when we look at values, I think one of the most revealing things for me is, is, is that it isn't that I hold a discrete set of values. I have a whole sea of values, a system of values, a mess of values. Uh, but within that, I have a prioritization. There are ones that are more important to, to, to me, a, a, a prioritization that can be shaped by all sorts of, 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 of different elements um, in, in, in terms of the media maybe, in terms of what I see as the dominant value within society, in terms of my own experience, in terms of my context and, 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 and situation. But what is really important is we all hold that mess of values. Where we differ uh, is in which values we, 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 we prioritise. And, and the big challenge is can we get people to prioritise values of hospitality, reciprocity, uh, and, and, and autonomy. And that's not about trying to hammer people and say, you've got to hold those, those values. It's about engaging those values, reminding people, you actually already hold these values. Could we give some priority to, 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 to those values? And that's the secret of values. Can we call up those values, remind people they hold those values, and, and deploy them then as, as motivating factors uh, for, for, for change? And that does focus us in on, 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 on communication. And if we think about it, um, it's quite disturbing in some ways, but we get a lot of messages every day. We get in, 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 in European countries, on average, about 1,600 messages a day. That's quite a lot, and that's even more than Twitter. Um, <coughs> but if we look at America, it's more than 3,000 messages a day. Uh, very powerful. What values are those messages predominantly carrying? The messages, the values they carry are the values of the individual, the values of competition, the values of status and wealth, the values of status and, 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 and power, or maybe the values of security and, 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 and tradition. And these are all anxiety-inducing values. These are all fear-laden values in, in, in many ways. Uh, but above all, they're oppositional to the values that we would seek to espouse. Reciprocity, uh, <coughs> um, autonomy, uh, uh, hospitality, dignity, inclusion, so, 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 social justice. And values are like muscles, where they don't get exercised, they don't get prioritised. So failure to communicate and engage the values that we would espouse means that they are not being prioritised, therefore they are not serving as motivations, whether within individuals or organisations, to achieve change. And that does challenge us to pursue <coughs> new forms of, of communication, wh whether it's in, in, in civil society or, or, or the public sector or in, in, in culture, cultural institutions. If we want to create communities <coughs> uh, rooted in reciprocity, autonomy and, and, and hospitality, we need to look at values-led communication where we engage those values, call up those values, remind people that they hold those values, uh, and ensure that they're prioritised and therefore at work in motivating how people make choices and, 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 set, and set, set goals. And yet if we look at our communication in, in civil society in particular, too often we tend to mirror the values of those we perceive to be powerful or the values we perceive that the powerful hold in many ways. We engage in marketing. We appeal to the values we think they hold and then tack on <coughs> what we want out of those values. We, we interpret them. But what are we doing? OK, we're looking for the immediate gain, but we're engaging a set of values that are oppositional to the ones we actually want to call up in people. We don't respect that those people also hold those values and those values could, could be engaged. If we look at cultural institutions, I think we, we do need to see it is the space where values could be explored so, so creatively, and I don't believe it's, it, it's happening. We need cultural spaces to engage creatively, creatively with the challenge of what do we want? <coughs> what do we want? What sort of future do, do, do we want? And what sort of values is that future uh, rooted in? We need cultural institutions to create spaces uh, <coughs> to explore who we are in terms of the values that, we, that we, we, we prioritize, and to remind us about who we are and the values that, that, that we might prioritize. Uh, and that's where communication becomes a key motor for change. Communication becomes a space where, where there is a popular prioritization 
her values of, 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 of dignity and, and inclusion and, and, and social justice. And that is a powerful force for, for change and, and, and for a better society. Likewise, we need new forms of, of, of or organization, <coughs> organizations doing their business in a different way. All organizations are values-based, that if we strip back any organization and what it produces, we'll see there's a set of values that, that have informed that. It mightn't be the set of values that that organization thinks it holds or thinks it works out of, uh, because it's values-based rather than values-led. We've not looked at values sufficiently in terms of organizations, and therefore we, we, we end up being surprised at the outputs that we get. They're not what we expected from, from that organization. We need to look at our own organizations. We need to look at those organizations we're in contact with, and above all, we need to look at those organizations that have power to shape community and shape the spaces that, that community uh, ex exists in. And we need those organizations to be explicit about their values. <coughs> we need them to be consistent in terms of applying them over time uh, <coughs> and in, in, in all places, and to be coherent, to apply them in everything that they do, not to be for reciprocity today and for individualism tomorrow in, 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 another, in, in another place. And we need those core values that are explicit to include something about dignity, something about social justice, something about inclusion and diversity, about reciprocity, about autonomy, about ho ho hospitality, however we put it. And that can only happen where organizations become explicit about their values in terms of setting out, these are our values, this is what our values mean in this organization. And these are the implications of these values for the way we do business, for the way staff behave, and for the objectives we set as, 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 a, as, a, as an organization. Values-led organizations have a values proposition in place that sets out those values explicitly and teases out the implications of those, val th those values and then applies that proposition when it makes plans. Is this plan contributing to the, val to the objectives that flow from our values? Applies it when it does communication. Are we engaging our values when we communicate with, 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 other, with other people? It sets it out when we make decisions. Does this decision reflect the, these values? Values and the values proposition become the lens through which the organization views what it does, decides what it does, uh, 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 and, and, and plans for, 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 what it can, for, for what it can achieve. The, the <coughs> there is, I think, significant opportunities at the moment with the sta that statutory duty in terms of public bodies. Um, that public bodies are required to assess the equality and human rights issues relevant to their brief. They are required to plan uh, in terms of what are they doing about those issues or what do they plan to do about those issues. They are required to report annually in terms of what have you done about those issues and what progress have you made on, on, on those issues. Uh, and, and it is about... Uh, eliminating discrimination, promoting equality, uh, and protecting human rights for staff, for service users, and for policy be be beneficiaries. What an important moment for the public sector to rediscover its equality and human rights values. Values that have been traumatized over the period of financial cutbacks and, 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 and the significant problems that the public sector uh, has faced. Values that sadly have been traumatized by processes of public sector reform, which have been about a completely different set of values. Important, uh, value for money, efficiency, effectiveness, we, we all want that. Uh, but we also want dignity, we want justice, we want uh, in, in inclusion in that regard. Here's a moment to rebalance values within the public sector. Here's a moment to recreate uh, the values-led organizations that we know are, 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 are there and need to come forward again if we're to create communities based on reciprocity, hospitality, and, 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 and uh, 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 autonomy in, in that regard. In conclusion then, <coughs> I suppose <coughs> my argument is for <coughs> um, values coming centre stage, not in place of other things, but as another key element in, in, the, in the way we, 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 we do our business. That we seek a commitment to these values from institutions, a commitment to be values-led and to be led by values of hospitality, reciprocity and, and, uh, and autonomy. And that is the way we will get, create and build environments that are accessible, relevant and used to affect by older people in living lives that they have reason to, to, to value. We also need to engage those values more pop properly so that there is a demand from older people and from other groups in, in society for reciprocity, hospitality and, and, and autonomy. And wh when they're engaged, they become prioritised. <coughs> when they're prioritised, they motivate and they build a demand for, 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 for change and they build a demand for that sort of environment that's accessible, relevant and used to affect by, by, by older people. And the challenge, I think, 
of, of, of today <coughs> is to move to the notion of inspiring change uh, and seeking organizations that are led by their values and seeking ways of talking to people in, in terms of engaging values that they already have and just need to be reminded, to be prioritized and to be a force for change. Thank you.